Well, here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. Uh, we are in today our fourth excerpt on the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31. We have covered it all the way from the day that she was proven to be a virtuous woman as a starting out in her life to where she is now. Now verse 22, 7, excuse me, verse 27 is where we we're going to start. She is honored by her family. Verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Wow. Man, what a statement that is today. That, that woman does not eat the bread of idleness. That is the doing nothing, sitting on the couch, watching judge, judge after judge after judge uh, come and go on the TV, uh, doing absolutely nothing, uh, stuffing the face, gaining weight you don't need, and... Uh, when the husband comes home, the house is not clean, not took care. Uh, you haven't had time to cook because there was another judge coming around. You just absolutely couldn't tear away from. Uh, you had to watch it. And so <clears throat> this is where we are today in our society. An idle wife, an idle wife or an idle mother is not a virtue. That is a bad virtue, not a good one. Uh, uh, you need to be anagectic. Anna. <laughs> or whatever it is. Kind of like hypoactive, anagectic. But uh, you also need to be uh, forever active. You need to be active. If you're not active, you can't sit on the couch and not be active. You need to be active active. Uh, I actually am married to a woman who is when she's not cooking, uh, when she is not uh, doing housework, uh, when she's not doing something, her pastime is to do a crossword puzzle or two, but her biggest pastime is to knit blankets for babies, which is that's what she does on a continual basis after the day's work is done. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. I praise my wife. Fifty years I've been praising my wife. Oh, would I love to be as good a man as she is woman. I can't be as good a man as she is woman because she's a better woman than I am man. She does better at what she does around the house and whatever than what I do. How many projects do you have going, husband? Twelve? Is that all? I thought you had twenty. Wow. Are you going to try to complete one this month? <laughs> yes, honey. I'm going to try to complete one this month. Oh, well, if you do good, and if you don't, okay. Verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Many women that I've known through the years have done virtuously, but my wife excels beyond the majority of those women. My mama, first bless her heart, she went to heaven uh, a couple of months ago, and as she took off uh, for heaven, she said she was ready, and going to go be with my father and with God, and I was happy for her, 96 years old, a woman that never, not ever, that I know of, I do not remember. In my total 71 years I am, and from the first day I could hear my mother speak to the day she died, I never one time ever heard my mother say a bad thing about somebody. I don't remember ever hearing my mother say a bad thing about 
somebody. And if somebody else said a bad thing about something, Mama will say, maybe they're in a learning process. Maybe they're in a tough place. Maybe there's a reason for why what's happening is happening. But we ought to take these examples. I like the fact that Paul said it to, 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 to uh, Tim Timothy. said, uh, I know that your mother, uh, Eunice and Lois, your grandmother, had taught you from youth properly. And a good woman is going to teach her children virtuous ways. Do you know that favor is deceitful and beauty is vain? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Woo, to me, to me, I got the most beautiful woman in the world. But as far as glamour goes, she probably wouldn't, she would fit in way down the line as far as glamour goes. But there's no more beautiful woman in the world than a, a useful woman. 100%, 24 hours a day, useful woman. Doing something useful all the time. Give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her own work praise her in the gates. The last thing he says in 31. That we honor. We are to honor her. And the public is to honor her. And of all things her husband is to honor her more than anybody. She is a deserving. She is deserving of honor because of her successfulness as a virtuous woman. Being a successful, virtuous woman means that she's humble. It means that she's God-fearing. It means that she is she honors her family. That means that she is not an idle mother or an idle wife, but an active woman. That she's prudent. Not only is she prudent, she's practical. She has been practical throughout her life to practice the proper things to raise the proper family so that they would have a proper life for themselves. That they would have a deserving life, an successful life, successful life. That they would excel in virtue. I got a grandson right now that excels in virtue. And a girlfriend he has excels in virtue. They are going to have a lifetime marriage. And one of the best there ever was, I'm sure, because they have decided they're both going to be virtuous people. And they're going to do their very dead level best to have the best in their family. And his father, whom is my son, is the same way. He takes after his mother. He is going to see that their family is properly built. And it will be a virtuous family. And what a picture. And he has some friends that are virtuous too. Some young people I think much of that I know are waiting. And when the day comes that they get married, then, then they can hold hands. Then they can uh, hug each other. Then they can be involved in the physical things if they wait until those physical things, the due time. There is a season for everything. There is a time for everything. Our problem today seems to be is that we're putting the everything before the time is ready. And because of that, we're finding ourselves in much trouble. We're finding ourselves married in infatuation and not love. There's a big difference in infatuation and love. There's a big difference in being virtuous 
and being a wild woman, there's a big difference in being a homemaker and being a home wrecker. They're both out there today. Which are you? Make sure you're a homemaker. Make sure that you're a virtuous woman or man. Make sure that your life counts what little bit of time you have on this earth. That you're that what you leave behind in evidence of how a family should be is the proper thing to be leaving behind. The proper type of family. I must go. Our time has come and gone. See you next time. Bye-bye.